Hi, I'm Charlene Campbell. I'm a licensed midwife in the state of Washington and in the state of Idaho. I've been practicing midwifery for more than 30 years now, um, both in Canada and the United States. Um, and I'm excited that you're taking this course, this um, Introduction to Midwifery Skills Level 1. And uh, we have some great um, footage for you. I think you're going to have fun with it too. It's, um, it's, it's a combination of many years of um, filming that I've done. And um, so it's been over the course of many years that, I, that I've gathered this various footage and, and these different um, training videos and films I made for students. Um, I've been teaching and, and um, working with students now for, again, over 30 years and just really enjoying um, my experience as a midwifery educator and uh, support um, as a midwife for, for many, many couples over the years. So it's been a, a great privilege to, to be a midwife. So what does that mean to you, midwifery, when you hear the word midwife? What are the images that come up for you? So um, maybe some of you are coming from a place of very little understanding of midwifery and you just watched Call the Midwife and said, I love it, I wanna do it. <laughs> or maybe um, you are taking a formal midwifery program and you just wanna sharpen your midwifery skills and review and do a, a good review. I think this is a great way to review skills. And it's very detailed. The, the um, explanations are, are created so that it starts at the ground floor. So there's basically three phases to midwifery education um, and midwifery mastery for you. And that is the first phase is really introducing the material and just getting familiar with it and starting to understand it. So this is, that's what this course is for you. It's just introducing the skills of midwifery. There's a whole nother didactic portion of midwifery which is studying, you know, anatomy and physiology, understanding the um, uh, epidemiological aspects of midwifery care as well as, you know, the normal um, findings. But there's a whole lot more of that than we would go into in this course. This course is basically um, understanding and developing your skills, your practical skills. So it's more the practical aspect of midwifery. And so, um, but when you think about midwifery, what do you think? Do you think of um, a home birth? Or do you think of um, a hospital birth with a midwife? Or, um, do you think of Call the Midwife? <laughs> um, it really, every country has its own system. So there really are a lot of different types of midwifery going on in the world right now. Um, there's community midwives that are hired by the government-based um, medical support systems of the country. And then there are um, registered midwives, licensed midwives, certified professional midwives, um, birth center midwives. So there's just, there's all kinds of midwives. Um, and the model of midwifery care that we're going to adopt for this course, I think, just to keep it, because it is a generic midwifery course that anyone could take from any country in the world. And um, so it'll be, it would be interesting to know where you're from and, and, uh, what your midwifery model of care is in your area. So really studying that, there's usually several different things going on. Like in the United States, we have the certified professional or the certified nurse midwives who, who become nurses for four years first before they start their midwifery training. And then there's the certified professional midwife, which is a national accreditation, which, um, is a more physiologically supportive model of care, for especially for low-risk women. So um, sometimes someone could be a midwife and be working in a hospital setting and they operate kind of similar to a regular physician, to be honest. 
and that's quite typical here in the United States but so wherever you're from you know look it up start reading start asking people questions and find out what's going on in your community what different types of midwives do you have in your area and what kind of a midwife do you want to be so we try to make this course as generic as possible so that you can um, still use it no matter what if you're going to be working in a hospital setting or a home birth setting or a birth center setting or a combination of all three or two of those which happens frequently um, then you you know you'll still be able to apply these principles these are basic basic assessment principles that are vital and will do much better if you practice them over and over so my suggestion with this course is to watch the, the program and then kind of just take it in. Don't feel like you have to memorize. Don't take notes the first time. Then if you can watch it again and just try to just really absorb, then maybe if you want to jot a few things down that you want to remember. But just to kind of um, trust that you will develop the you know understanding for these things as you go and don't put too much pressure on yourself you learn better when you're not you know um, anxious so relaxation try to you know do some deep breathing there's a great program called where where there's a will there's an a and that's a program that helps students to learn different strategies for remembering um, information and for studying and for learning and I think um, some of the things that I used that I thought were very helpful is that you retain something that you learn at the beginning or the end of your um, session of your um, study session so if you're something you want to remember you put it on a three by five and you just remind yourself at the beginning and the end of the session and it helps to get it more kind of into your brain of course, hands-on is the best way to really integrate the information that you're learning here. So what I recommend is just find anybody who will let you, your brother, your sister, your, your children, your husband, your partner, whoever you can find, who will let you um, do blood pressure, do pulse, do um, skin turgor testing, you know, just anything that you can if you have a friend who's pregnant or your sister's pregnant and she'll let you listen to the baby um, I wanted to show you something here that's kind of neat you're gonna see very various different ways to measure the baby's heart rate you're wondering why I've got this in my hand okay why do you think I have this in my hand there's something that you could do with this that would really be helpful if you didn't have the, the other tools which you never know you really never know birth is something that happens anywhere at any time we really we need to know just like we need to know CPR how to take care of a situation but as a learning student a great thing to do is to get a couple of these and keep them with you and then when you have um, someone who will let you maybe that isn't that doesn't have too many extra layers because you know this is a little more of a sensitive um, hearing experience you need to kind of really listen and focus and so if there's too much going on there it might be hard to listen especially with trimmer moms that you can hear through the um, through the skin and there's not a lot of you know in between and stuff so and then you just put this on your ear and lean it right on the mother's belly almost hear the pulse in my hand so that's a little tip I wanted to give you I also wanted to just go over really basically what you're gonna see here is an overall introduction um, to to the midwifery model of care just by watching the different practitioners you're gonna get a, a sense that there's different ways of responding and reacting with your um, my light saver thing just went off so I'm going to turn it back on there you are yeah I'll just change that too <laughs> all this I'm doing this myself 
so it's kind of a new experience for me. But um, uh, to do this on a, on a program that takes the, the video for you. So now what I wanted to talk to you about though with this program is that you will see different styles of midwifery um, practice. So you'll see like um, Bev is one of the practitioners that you will watch her full exam today. So you'll kind of get a sense of how she interacts with her um, client. One of the things I, I noticed when I watched Bev that I really liked was that she, um, when she tells, she told the client that her hands were cold and she kind of went like this a little and said, and then she touched the woman's arm and just held it before she touched her belly. It just, there was kind of a sense of great respect that I felt that she had for that woman and the integrity and boundary between them. You know, so really respecting a woman's boundary line of, um, I'm not just going to like reach out and touch you when my hands are ice cold and not tell you and not give you a warning, but I'm not going to say I can't do it because they're cold. I'm going to do what I need to do and I'll try my best to warm them up or rinse them under some warm water beforehand if they're really cold from like being outside or something. So, so notice that about her. Notice about different styles about Elias Cass is a male midwife naturopathic uh, doctor in Seattle, Washington. He has great characteristics. One of the things I love that he does is whenever the baby is showing any kind of responsiveness, he says hi to the baby. If you watch his, um, his segments, um, you'll notice that, that he always, he always addresses the baby. It's, it's just this great respect that these practitioners have for the mothers and these um, souls that are developing inside them. It's a sacred calling to be a midwife and uh, I'm grateful that I can be part of your journey in this great um, discovery process. We will talk about the female anatomy. We'll go over that a little. You can watch those over and over again as well. They're, they're excellent. And also, um, we will talk about the maternal physical exam and the prenatal care, and we'll talk about the clinic site, and, and you can see how one clinic really does their, their blood work and their um, urinalysis, and everyone's going to be slightly different. So you just, it's, a, it's, it's your learning journey, and you learn the different ways, and you kind of learn to adapt to who you're working with if you're a student midwife. I think start by just getting your supplies together and start asking people if you can do things, you know, um, that are simple like blood pressure and pulse, those kinds of things. If you get good at that, then um, you can be helpful to someone <laughs> if they need you and uh, they might not mind having you there if you're, if you're good at your birth etiquette. And we'll talk about that. Listen to the birth etiquette. Be seen and not heard um, <laughs> as much as possible. Um, you know, you, you kind of want to be more of a support person than um, too, too forward in your, you know, your, your speaking and your behavior. You want to kind of more be a, just a background kind of person. It's kind of a, a humble place to be a midwife. And, uh, and the student midwife who has humility will go a long way. And her teacher will be blessed she's part of that practice and that's a gift that's a gift a true gift okay so um, what are some of the other things that we'll see we'll see the abdominal exam um, and uh, you know that's something that would be fun for you to practice with the toilet paper roll or you know a panard a panard it's demonstrated in the in the videos and, and it's just it's like fifteen dollars maybe or, you know, 12 pounds or something. And and you get that, you know, Panard. And that thing is forever. You don't need batteries or anything. We're great. So I recommend a Panard for an early starting out midwife. Um, and develop your ear and just, you tune your ear. It's like it's like learning to sing or run or, or do anything that we learn, that we have to develop, that we have to work hard at, that we have to be consistently 
working at and keep trying and not let mistakes or stumbling blocks keep us from continuing to master. So there's the introduction, the practice, and the mastery stage of all skill uh, skill development and mastery. So that's, you know, when you want to become excellent at something, you need to do it a lot. You need to, first of all, watch it done. You know, observe, and then take part with under supervision. And then slowly under supervision, you become more of a senior, a senior student under supervision. And you get more and more responsibilities after you've mastered the ones that you've been given. So, um, the next portion of this tape will be, um, or of this course, will be the labor and delivery. So we'll talk about how to set up the trays at the births, how to, um, what your duties would be, the type of things that you might be called upon to do, like call 911 if you're in a birth center or a home birth that's not attached to a hospital. Like I said, there's so many different types of midwifery practice styles and midwifery practices and midwifery models. Um, we're going to use the basic midwifery model that I found um, by the Midwifery Task Force, which the research was done in multiple countries in the world. And um, I'd like to just go over that with you very basically. But the basic um, outline of that is that the, we would be um, giving the mother monitoring. I have this written down. I'm just going to look at it here real quick. But we would um, be, I just like to read this because this is sort of what I'm going to base, what I think the midwifery model of care is. And then we'll look at other different mid midwifery models of care and what different um, areas where, where you might be living. You can research that for yourself as well. But we'll just use this as the basic because when I hear, sometimes when I hear people talking about midwives and they think, They've gone to a midwife and then they tell me what happened at their, you know, experience where the midwife didn't even come in until they were delivering the baby. If your midwife's not, you know, on purpose, you know, where there are nurses in there for hours and days and the midwife hadn't, hadn't stayed. So the, the, the midwifery model of care is, is um, a continuity modality. So it's for continuity. There are some midwifery models that aren't as supportive of continuity. So it, it really, that's a kind of a spectrum. And if you want to learn more about that, I recommend a book called um, Models That Work by Robbie Davis Floyd, an anthropologist, and studier of um, midwifery models in this world. And so, but, but the main point of that that I wanted to make is that um, that we want to have kind of a common um, sort of reference point, and if 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 it's not if it's in, um, in introducing technology, um, supportive of intervention, and um, just lacking in a lot of the basic tenets of the midwifery model of care, then it really isn't the midwifery model of care. So let's just talk about what are the tenets of the midwifery model of care. Basically, what is a midwife? So what is a midwife? A midwife, according to the midwifery task force, is someone who monitors and provides care throughout the pregnancy, labor, delivery, and early postpartum period of about six to eight weeks. So that's the period, the childbearing cycle, and that they would provide, you know, physical assessments, um, help with social and um, emotional um, needs as well. So really helping assess needs, helping facilitate needs, making referrals where necessary. Um, and providing the mother with an individualized education. That's exactly um, one of the most important, I think, aspects of midwifery model of care is the shared, informed 
style of decision making that goes on. So where you are presenting the mother, the parents, with a optional plan. So here are, here's what's going on, here's the risks, here's the benefits of that, here's what our options are. And then, you know, and then you give her the chance to to make that decision. The light keeps going off. Okay. Got to set that differently, but anyway, you get to see that. Welcome to this course. I hope you enjoy it. Um, we're going to talk about the um, newborn exam on here as well. We're, we're going to introduce the newborn exam. We'll go into it. Uh, much more detailed in later um, levels. So there's three levels in all to this course. This is level one, and I hope you enjoy it. Bless you. I've got to use this. Not a touch screen.